Hi, this is Elida Roxana 12, and today I'm going to be talking about the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve for people that are studying for the CCRN exam. I myself am studying the exam for the exam, and this is a concept that I had a little bit of difficulty with. Um, I'm not a respiratory therapist, my sister is. I really haven't seen this in the five years I've been practicing. Um, but for purposes of taking a CCRN exam, it's necessary to memorize this for the test. Basically, your PaO2, um, which is the oxygen that's dissolved in your plasma, is the driving pressure that forces oxygen to combine with hemoglobin. When you have a normal curve, it's going to be to the right. Um, but for these purposes, we're going to be talking about abnormal findings. So any shift too far over to the right or too far over to the left is abnormal, and there's going to be certain reasons for this. Um, so basically, I really like this um, graph here. It's pretty self-explanatory. The vertical part of the graph shows the SAO2 which in a healthy adult it should be greater than 97 percent and this is in an arterial sample obviously if you have a mixed venous sample it's going to be lower but I don't think they use this curve with mixed venous samples um, and then the vertical I'm, I'm sorry the horizontal part of this graph is the PO2 or the PAO2 which in a healthy normal adult it should be 80 to 100 millimeters mercury and um, a midpoint for this is usually about 93 so anyways um, okay so let me just talk to you about the shifts which is pretty much what the test questions in the book that I'm using to study as a study guide focus on so a shift to the right, too far over to the right, and basically it's just like using a graph. You're just going to take your fingers and when you have the two values that they may or may not give you, they're going to take the two values and just measure them up to the graph. Okay, so like I said, a shift to the right is, okay, a right shift is going to be less oxygen in the blood um, because oxygen is more readily given up to tissues and what's going to cause this um, the primary things that cause this are acidosis hypercarbia or high levels of CO2 and fever or hyperthermia so I'm a mnemonic person so a good way for me to remember this is by thinking R for right shift and hypercarbia and fever or hyperthermia so if you like mnemonics that's a good way to memorize it okay a shift to the left um, that is when hemoglobin binds to oxygen more tightly so that hemoglobin does not want to let go of that oxygen and less oxygen is released to the tissues so the causes for this are alkalosis, hypocarbia, or low CO2, and hypothermia. So you think about it, you think of somebody when they're hypothermic, and the first thing you think of is cyanosis in their extremities, which this makes a lot of sense, because if the oxygen is refusing to let go of the hemoglobin, you're extremities are and your tissues are obviously going to not be first priority as your vital organs are so you're gonna get that cyanosis so that's pretty much all the little points that I have um, it's best to just simplify things when you're studying for the CCRN because it's so many questions so as long as you know the basic concepts um, I don't know, it helped me with my study questions. So if you have any other additional questions or you have any comments, um, just send me a message or leave me a comment. And I hope this helps. So happy studying.